Good morning and a warm welcome to the first of our harvest services here in Drumlee. It's good to see the church so well filled and we look forward to the, the meeting this morning. Uh, the service will be taken by Reverend Harry Robinson behind me here, no stranger to us, and we welcome Harry and we look forward to the message that he's bringing. Uh, this evening, again, we'll have the evening service will be conducted at 7 p.m. by our convener, Reverend George McClelland, and afterwards there will be some refreshments up in the church hall. I just at this point, I'd like to thank all who provided produce and helped in any way in setting up the church and decorating it and having it, making it look so well, and also to our choir here, for, and we uh, look forward in anticipation of the message they're bringing us in song. Uh, just as a, a few things uh, in the announcements, and there are probably more details on the WhatsApp if you want to read them in, in full. Uh, just after the close of the service, could have a wee bit of help up to the church hall just to set up for uh, tonight. And then also this afternoon at 3 p.m. is the GB&B enrollment service in Ballaroni. Uh, this Monday night coming is the Knitting and Crochet Club at the usual time. PW will meet on uh, Tuesday night and Ruth Graham from Kilkeel will be there to bring tes testimony and song and all the women folk are, are most welcome. Uh, midweek again is here in Drumlee this Wednesday night and it'll be taken by Harry Baxter and continuing the series of talks that Harry has been given. And then follow, finally, Next Sunday, the service here in Drumlee will be taken by Jim King. Thank you, and I'll hand over to Harry now. Thank you. Thanks, Derek, for the welcome back. It's always good to be here. The Lord has promised that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Therefore, let us come, let us worship and bow down, kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let's sing out our praises to him as we sing number 58, Praise God for the Harvest. <laughs>
pray together. Our mighty and our eternal God, your love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your mercy never ends. Would you, as we gather, fill us with gratitude for all your benefits? Around us in church today, we see the evidences of what you have provided for us. So will you please move us to worship and praise you with enthusiasm, for you more than deserve our wholehearted devotion. We recall your faithfulness in many another way, for we have known your guidance in times of decision, the blessing of your presence with us in times of difficulty, your comfort in sorrow, your answer when we have cried to you for help, your strengthening when we have felt overwhelmed by temptation. You have not forsaken us. Your mercy and grace have not left us for an instant. But in contrast, here in your presence, we need to say that there are times when we have forgotten and indeed forsaken you. We think of time misspent, we think of opportunities lost. We think of talents unused. We think of duties omitted. The truth is our hands have sometimes been busy in worthless endeavor. We've allowed ourselves to be swayed by worldly impulses. We haven't always controlled our speech. You have kept your promise to us. That while the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not fail. Forgive us for our broken promises, for our repeated faults, our many failures. And bring us, we pray you, to a position of true repentance, to a place where we are not only sorrow, sorry and remorseful, but where we make a clean break with our sins. And then, Lord, in the place of our sinful failure, would you please develop in us the fruit of your Spirit. Let there be more and more seen in our lives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And all these, for your glory alone. Amen. Now the choir lead us in our worship as they sing, This is the Day. Whether in 
good, thank you. Now, boys and girls, do you want to come up to the front? We're going to have not much room here, but if, what about coming in here? Can we open that up? Yeah, we can. Can you make your way in? Yeah, good stuff. <gasps> Breathe in there. Good stuff, and we'll use a second pew as well. Yeah, let's open that up there. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we are. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anybody been at a birthday party yet recently? Have you? I was at a birthday party yesterday. Oh, here. We need a PowerPoint up somewhere. There we go. Things are happening, even as we speak. So I was at a birthday party yesterday, and this is the birthday girl here. This is Emily. Any Emily's here? No oh, Emily. Okay, that's okay. That's our Emily. All right. Aged seven. Okay. Now, and then, this is our Emily. Aged, hmm, what was Emily there? Just less than a year. Now something has happened to Emily between then and now. She has done something beginning with C. Ch. C H and D. Ch. She has. Ch. What do you think she has done? Excellent. She has indeed. She has changed. Yeah, just as you have changed, yeah. No, anybody know who that is? I'll give you a clue, she's sitting in church this morning. But she no longer looks like this. Or even like that. Any ideas? I thought at least one person would have a good idea, but we'll not worry about that. Tell you what, why don't we, will we just ask her to stand up and shall we see? Will we do that? Would you like to stand up or wave? Just a wave. Did you all see that wave? Did you? Okay. What has she gone and done? She has, she has changed, hasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, somebody else. Now, who's that fine fellow? He's in church today, too. Do you want to take a wee look around you? Have you read my hand? Or look from what like that? Any takers? Could have been Graham, right enough. Yeah, could have been Graham. Yeah, maybe so, maybe so. Yeah, I'll okay, give you another one off him. What do we think? Any ideas? No idea at all. Oh my lord. Right, right. <laughs> I, hadn't I hadn't realized I had ch so much. <laughs> it's the her. It's the Right, we don't need any of that. <laughs> I have most certainly changed, have I not? Yeah? To the extent you wouldn't even have known me. My word. Right. No. And that's true of every, every single person, including yourselves, which makes it a wee bit hard for us just to think we have a God who does not change. And he says this himself in a little book called Malachi. I am the Lord, I do not change. Now that's really, really important when it comes to one of these. Do you ever do one of those? Do you know what those are? They are indeed. They are pinky promises. Yeah, they are pinky promises. We can make one of those and then we could say, oh, I've changed my mind which isn't good, but it can happen. 
But you see, that's never the case with God because he does not change. He always, always keeps his promises. Yeah. And today we're thinking about one of those. He said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never cease. It'll never stop. It'll keep on going. We'll always have a springtime. We'll always have an autumn. We'll have a time to sow and a time to reap and a time to rejoice in what God has given us. He keeps his promise. Here's another promise that is brilliant. He also has said, I'll never leave you. And that's very, very true. And that's because he's the same. He always, always keeps his promise. So no matter where you are, no matter whether it's day or night, no matter whether you're on your own or in company, God is always, always there with you. Thanks for listening. I'm deeply hurt that you didn't recognize me, but that's okay. I'll get over it. Just scurry away back to your seats. We're going to sing the hymn for the fruits of his creation. <coughs> singing and we're not going to miss out on that. Thanks, Jenny. <coughs> <coughs>
time of harvest thanksgiving we lift up to you our farmers those whose daily lives in some ways have not changed what with continual hard work day in day out year in year out with their plans and their labor sometimes paying off but at other times ending in disappointment such has been farming for as long as we can remember but in recent times how different and how many times more difficult it has become. With so much change, so much uncertainty. Complex issues to be faced. Difficult decisions to be made. And those decisions made rather harder and more complex by the outworkings of Brexit and border. So would you please give sensitivity, real sensitivity, to our decision makers that they may truly care about the impact of what they agree, so that those whose livelihood is already precarious may not find themselves further disadvantaged. And alongside our farmers with their massive challenges, we pray for all others to whom, humanly speaking, we owe our harvest, all those whose work makes it possible for us to benefit from the fertility and the productivity of your world. Those who are processing food, those who distribute it, those who sell it to us. We think of farmers in other lands facing different challenges, often denied the resources they need to cultivate their land, sometimes overwhelmed by drought, and if not by drought, then by flood leaving them and those who depend upon them unable to enjoy the fruits of their labors. And we pray for those who make possible to us the modern harvest of technology, our scientists, our technicians, our computer programmers, our engineers, their skills opening up new worlds to us and new possibilities for us. Our Creator God, would you continue to guide and strengthen all these for whom we have prayed. May they know joy and reward in their work. And may there an outcome of it be that your harvest will be more fairly shared so that none will have too much while many have nothing. For then your kingdom will have come a little closer and your will more nearly done on earth as in heaven, and all to your Son's praise and glory. Amen. The choir, for the gifts of heaven. Oh, 
Very well, well done, folks. Your practice has clearly paid off, and you've added considerably to our harvest worship. So thank you. I'm going to read three short readings along the same theme. Uh, the first one, if you find in Psalm 102, uh, there's just a few verses in each, so uh, if I may just read them to you, and uh, I think you'll get the connecting link, and if you think back to our children's address, you'll most certainly get the connecting link. The psalmist writes of God, verse 25 of Psalm 102, in the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They, sh they will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same. And your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. And then over in the little book of Malachi, one of the verses that we were looking at with the children. Malachi 3, verse, verse 6. This is not the psalmist speaking about the Lord. This is the Lord himself speaking about himself and saying, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. And over into the New Testament, into the book of James, we're going to read from verse 16 of chapter 1. Or we read this, don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Amen. And may God help us to take to heart and to understand the truth of this, his word. Does that Victor get back and get a PowerPoint going? There we go. I'm sure you know the moment. You've been there. You're just about to put your money into a pay and display meter in a car park, or maybe some other sort of vending machine. And just as you're about to do so, your eye catches a little sticker. And on seeing it, you look again at the coin that you're just about to put in. You wonder if it's worth it, because the sticker says, no change. Or if you find yourself in a better class of establishment, confronting a meter or a vending machine with correspondingly better manners, then instead of the sticker saying, no change, it'll more likely say, sorry, no change. But either way, be it the plain or the posher version, a situation of no change is a decided disadvantage to us. We're the losers. We're paying a little more for the convenience. That's how it is in car parks, leisure centers, and so on. No change. And we're the poorer. But I'm inviting you to see today that that slogan can take on a whole new and different meaning. A meaning that is very much to our advantage. For here, in a wonderful way, we are declaring together that there is no change. And far from us saying, sorry, no change, we are together saying, thankfully, mercifully, amazingly, there is no change, no change in the God whom we have gathered to worship and praise. And this marvelous characteristic 
isn't something that we sort of optimistically impose upon him, hoping it to be so. No, it is something that he declares and something that he discloses about himself. You heard it in all those passages we've just read. But straightest of all, we heard it in Malachi, where the Lord himself said, I, the Lord, do not change. We couldn't wish it to be any clearer or any firmer than that, could we? And it isn't even just the case that yesterday, today, and forever, he is basically the same or essentially the same. It's rather that yesterday, today, forever, he is exactly the same. There isn't one aspect of his being, there isn't one trait of his character that has changed, not even by the merest margin. I've always liked the way uh, an author called A.W. Pink has put that, and if you like, proved it. He said, he, God, he cannot change for the better, for he is already perfect. And being perfect, then he cannot change. For the worse. But can't you also see that having a God like this is actually rather hard for us to reckon with. Hard for us to take to heart. And it's hard because everything else we know and everyone else we know changes. I bumped into someone recently there, someone I haven't seen It must be for close on 40 years. Uh, And to be perfectly honest, I I hardly recognized them. I nearly walked past. For for there was gray where there used to be black. Uh, There was just a little where there used to be a lot. Uh, And there was plenty (laughs) where there didn't used to be so much. And that that was just his wife. Oh, no, it was him. I promise it was him. (laughs) But that's life, isn't it? We all change. Our world changes. Everything and everyone about us changes. And we're used to that. We think nothing of it. We just take it as red. But it does make it very difficult for us to come to terms with God. The only unchanged and unchanging entity in our entire lives. And for me, this is one of the great blessings of the harvest season and the harvest message. Because as year by year we meet among the produce of the earth, as year by year we see the ancient promise being kept, then somehow for me, and I'm hoping also for you, it is easier to think of and appreciate the unchanging God behind it. The God who keeps on keeping his word. I find it easier to come to terms with him at this time. And and that being so, well, let's, why don't we take the opportunity then to say just a little more. To say that because we have an unchanged and unchanging God, then we do have a God A God who is always true to his character. A God who's always true to his character. Come at it like this. Imagine the spectacle of a normally reserved and shy man kicking up his heels some evening in a hula. Or imagine someone who's very conservative and dull and predictable in their dress coming towards you in clothes so loud that you're sorry you haven't your sunglasses on. Or imagine someone who for all her life was a brunette and proud of it, suddenly coming up and turning up as a stunning blonde. Well, your first reaction is, wow! Now, I mean wow for the right reasons. You say, wow, that's not like him. Wow, that's not like her. What are you saying, really? You're saying that that person has been acting 
out of character. You're saying that how they presently appear, how they're presently behaving, it seems inconsistent, it seems out of sync with all that you've known of them previously. They've taken you by surprise. That's how it goes in life. We get our occasional surprises, pleasant and otherwise, all of which, no doubt, makes life's rich tapestry just that little bit more intricate and intriguing. But you know, even though that be true of people, even though they may, out of the blue, act out of character, that is not true. That is never the case with our God. For he does not work one way one day and another way the next. That is, he is not consistent and faithful down through our years. Only one day to flip and to treat us carelessly instead of caring for us. Apparently casting us off instead of cherishing us. You know, to think of the God like that is really to misunderstand him. Indeed it is to malign him. Because God is not like that. He's an unchanged and unchanging God. A God who's always, always true to his character. And what is his character? Well, it is essentially, it is chiefly, isn't it? A character of love. At the father heart of God, there is love. And love is so much a part of him. Love is so true of him that his word does not simply tell us that he loves or that he is loving. It says that he is love. It's so true of him. It's so characteristic of him that you can simply describe him as it. God is love. And what's it mean for us to have an unchanged and unchanging God whose chief and defining characteristic is that of love. Well, it means that this infinitely loving God is always but always extending his love toward us. In every day of life, in every event of life, God's love is right there with us. And there are no days when, and there are no places where, and there are no ways in which that is not so. His love is never absent. His love is never withdrawn or withheld. Because to do that would be for him to act out of character. And an unchanged and unchanging God never does that. He's always, always the same. He always, always loves. Which? is very easy to say and equally easy to see when all is going well with us. When it's blue skies overhead, when we and ours are safe and happy and well, it's not hard in those pleasant circumstances to believe in a God who always, always loves us. But what when those skies turn gray? What when the brightness gives way to darkness? What when the smooth path turns bumpy and full of potholes? What when something goes horribly wrong for us? Or worse, what if something goes wrong for someone near and dear to us? What if something goes terminally wrong for someone we love? Are we still as confident then in an unchanging God? Are we still as sure then that he still loves us? I think you know people as I do in every church just there are, as there are people who stay away from every church who are struggling with what has happened to them or happen to someone precious to them. They're unable to come to terms 
with their loss. They're unable to trust fully again this God who appeared to change, to act out of character. Just a few years ago, a fine young Christian woman in England, through the tragedy of a cot death, lost her only child. The child for whom she and her husband had longed and prayed and tried for years. So that after the joy and the euphoria, the seeming answer to prayer of a pregnancy and a birth, there came some months later the inexplicable, devastating cot death. A couple of weeks later, much to her minister's surprise, she was out at church again. And he said he couldn't help but notice her during one of the worship songs. For with her head uplifted towards God, her face radiant with trust and yet with tears trickling down her cheeks, she was singing this, Ascribe greatness to our God the rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice, good and upright is he. Many a time since, I picture that woman singing in that church. For I'm sure she got it right. The sorrow and the surrender together. The tears and the trust hand in hand. For as the years tick by, there will be tears. Inevitably, unavoidably, there will be tears in the eyes of every one of us. But just because the tears come doesn't mean that the trust has to go. Sorrow and surrender to God can live side by side. So no matter what we've been through, no matter how dark the day has been, we can still reach up in our hurt. We can still reach out in trust to the God who hasn't changed, to the God who always, always loves us. May he help us always to do just that. Moment of prayer together, please. Lord, help us to get hold of and to hold tight to the truth that you are an unchanged and unchanging God, always the same, always loving, always there for us. Help us then as we encounter the headaches and the heartaches of our journey through a fallen and flawed world, never to try to go it alone, still less somehow hold you accountable. Rather, give us the grace to reach out in quiet, confident trust to the God who hasn't changed, the God who doesn't change, the God who won't change, the God who always, always loves us. Amen. And so we conclude our service as we sing a hymn very much along the lines of what we have just been thinking. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, no shadow of turning in thee.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and with all those whom we hold on our hearts this harvest time and forevermore. Amen.